because he's been so good to us. Not that we deserve it, but he's just been kind. That's the kind of God we serve. Amen? Amen. Amen. Just a few announcements. Brother Billy Garrett, he's in intensive care at UAB. Brother Wayne Briggs, he's also at UAB. Let's keep all our sick and shut in and lifted up in prayer. Let's keep those families that have lost loved ones. Let's keep them in our prayers also. Let's pray for each other. Keep each other lifted up in prayer. Our scripture this morning comes from the book of John. John the seventh chapter, verses thirty-eight, I mean thirty-seven and thirty-eight. And it reads, In the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of the belly shall flow rivers of living water. The word of God for the people of God. Amen.
exactly what, what happened. But every day, brother, every hour, every minute, we depend on you. It is only you. Father, we don't even know our path. We have plans, yes. But our plans are not your plans. Keep us, Father, as we walk through this journey. Father, forgive us of our sins. Clean us up, Father. Renew the right spirit that is within us. Guide us as we go. We want to receive you in our heart and know that it is your love that keeps us. Keep us now, Father. Watch over us as we walk this journey. And Father, we pray for those who do not see you right now. We pray for those that are without you right now, Father. Our world is, is pretty screwed up right now. But watch over those that love you. Let your light shine within us to shine on someone else, to find you. They need to know you, Father. But they can't, they can't see you and they can't come in because they haven't invited you. We pray for those who are lost. Father, watch over the shepherd of this church as he tries and teach us the right way to go. By your word, Father, lift them up. Give him the strength he needs. Keep him close to you, Father. Watch over his family. So they may be safe as well. Father, one day, we will be able to stand around your altar again and give you thanks and praise. Father, your will be done. Watch over our church. Help those that need you, Father. Let us not call on you when we, when we are in dire need. Let us call on you when we have no need. To just give you thanks for being with us. Watch over our children, Father. Let them be the next generation to bring us back from a torn up world. And Father, we'll be sure to give you all the praise and all the glory. These and other many blessings we ask in your God and Son, Jesus Christ's name. And let everyone say, Amen. Amen. Jesus.
you might be seated. Our subject comes from the text. Set down the house in order. Set down the house in order. Hezekiah was one of the best kings whoever sat upon the throne of Judah and is distinguished as the greatest in faith of all. Judah's kings. Hezekiah was sincere. He was about. He was not a perfect man by any means, nor outstanding because of any brilliant gifts that he possessed. This good king, however, is to be admired when one remembers his family background. Having such a wicked pocket father as Ahaz, the wonder is that his son became the noble king he did. He had no pious trust but only a heritage of weakness in the moral fight for which God graciously made all fair alliances. With Hezekiah, accepted to the throne at the age of 25, there began a period of religious revival in which he was encouraged by the noblest and most eloquent of the Hebrew prophets, Isaiah, who knew how to carry his religion into politics. Hezekiah Galilee was a man who prayed about difficulties and dangerous overtaking him. What faith and confidence in God he revealed when he spread the letter before the Lord. Both Hezekiah and Isaiah defied the mighty Assyria. God used in one of the angels to slay 185,000 of Syria, Syria in a camp. This king Hezekiah knew how to pray about personal matters as well as military danger. Do I have a witness today? What faith and confidence in God he reveals when he did what he did. This king knew how to deal when a man was smitten with a fatal illness. He turned his face to the wall and he prayed. Isaiah, his friend. Isaiah was also Hezekiah's counsel. And Hezekiah asked with all his heart that he might live and God continued his life. I'm not going to hold you long and give you some background, but look at the text. First point I want to look at is 
Hezekiah sickness. Hezekiah sick. I, I don't know what it was. But Hezekiah was sick. I, I don't know whether he had diabetes. Yes, sir. I don't know if he had a bad heart. But we do know one thing. The text said that he was sick unto death. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Now, now, none of us may not have been sick unto death. But you don't know when you get sick, you don't know what it is. Somebody help me here. I, I, I remember right here in this pulpit, I had a heart attack. I didn't know whether it was sickness unto death. But I do know in the Amalek, God brought me back. And he made a way out of no way. Do I have a witness? Now, now, here Isaiah was told to, to go into his chambers, tell the Hezekiah to set down the house in order. I come today, yellow leaves, to tell this country you need to set down the house. In all. We're living in a country, yes, we're prosperous, but sin is taking over our country. And you need to set your house in all. Alabama, you need to set your house in all. Birmingham, 101 murders. For this weekend, Birmingham, we need to set our house in order. Do I have a witness? Yeah, we, we need to get our house. I'm going to ask a question. If Lord came to you right now and told you by 3 o'clock you won't be here, what would you do? Yes, Pray, party, or what would you do? Here, he told him, set your house. Isaiah, the prophet, told Hezekiah to set your house in order. This king was in bad shape. This king was sick. Am I right? Now, not only was he sick, but notice in verse 2 and verse 3, his supplication to the Lord. Hezekiah turned his head, turned his face toward the wall. Yes. And, and we, as saints of God, I, I don't know whether you, but I, have turned my face. You got to learn to turn your face from your circumstance. You got to turn your face from your problem. Turn your face. You got to turn your face away from your cell phone. You got to turn your face from some of your friends. So called friends. And turn when you turn your face, talk to God. That's what Hezekiah did. He turned his face to the wall. This is what he did. When he turned his face, he prayed. We got to learn here in our lives to learn how to pray. You may not know what, how to pray, but the Holy Spirit will guide you, lead you, and how teach you how to pray. We need to pray. I, I, I know it. I, I, it. It disturbs me in our moods that as many boys and women and girls have killed, been killed in this city alone. 
And our mayor said this not too long ago. He said, we need more than prayer. And, and, and I have a problem. I love my mayor, but I have a problem because you can't put police on their you, you can't put police under every traffic light. But the only thing that's going to change this is we who are saints of God, we got to turn our face to the wall. Notice, he prayed. Don't, 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 don't,
on your knees when I was out there for a team in the world. I used to get on my knees and lie to them. Oh, here we shall back. Yeah, you to get on my knees. Lord, I'm sorry. I, I, I should have left that statue. Come on. Uh-oh. Got no idea. I know it's Labor Day. I understand. I used to get on my knees and say, Lord, if you get me out of this mess, I get out of it. I serve you. Go right back and get back in the same mess that I But can you say, like Hezekiah, that I, 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 I done which is good in your sight? Do you know this what Hezekiah did? He was sick, but he wept. He said, they said he wept. He was serious about who, talk, who he was talking to. And he was serious about, listen, I'm talking to God. I've been perfect hard. I'm walking in your truth. And he cried. He was sincere about him talking to God. Sometimes we sit into a little bit of prayer. Do we really mean it when we talk to God? I talk to Him and cry. I talk to Him because God has been good to me and God has been good to you. Sometimes I take my iPad and I love it. I get my iPad and I pick up the sermon, pick up. And, and, and I get to cry, sit right there in the bed, get happy. Song of Zion, hear songs of Zion, and get happy right where I am. It makes me, it makes me think, God, you've been good to me. Do I have a witness? Well, then came. To Isaiah. The word of the Lord to Isaiah. Listen, after Isaiah told him to get his house in order, Isaiah started out the house. Somewhere between prayer and Isaiah, I, God told Isaiah to go back in. My, my, my God is quicker than quick. He, he can turn your situation around right now. Hezekiah's situation changed after he prayed. How, how many of you ever talk with God when you talk to him? Your situation changed. Can I help somebody here? Yeah. yeah, you remember when you were sick and you talked with the Lord and he made your way. Listen, the word of the Lord came to Isaiah. Look, Isaiah, go back. I, I know you just told Hezekiah to set his house in order that you think to die. But he told him, said, listen, thus said the Lord God of David, thy father. I heard thy prayer. And the God of David, that father, heard your prayer. I've seen your tears. Behold, I will add 15 years to your life. Oh, I'm talking to somebody here. One day, my friend, you like have been in an accident. But God stepped in. Could have been dead, but he stepped in and gave you a little more time. Do I have a witness here? Some of you in here, somebody been in pain. You thought that life was over. But God stepped in and gave you a little more time. Turn to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I thank God. For a little more time.
Who will have a witness here? He said, he looked at the salvation. He said, I will deliver thee the city out of the hand of the king. I will defend the city. Watch this. Verse 7. Look at the sign. And this shall be a sign unto thee from the Lord. That the Lord will do things. That's enough to shout about. And the Lord will do things. Anybody in here can say, and the Lord will do things. Anybody, y'all, y'all sitting looking at me, right? And the Lord will do things. <laughs> I can stand, stand here today and say, the Lord will do things. When, when you sit, when you thought to what? Will do things. When you thought you will go all do it, you thought you wasn't going to make it, but I'm the Lord. Will do things. Do I have a witness here? I, 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 I'm glad today that the Lord will. He will do things. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, the Lord will. Do things. Do I have a good thing? Well, the sign came. Behold, look at the sign, the shadow of the degrees, which is going down in the sun down of Ahab. Turn the sun back ten degrees. Do I have a witness here? By which the degree it was going down. Then God answered his prayer. Yes, sir. And Galilee has God answered your prayer. I'm glad today that he answered our prayer. Yes, sir. Anybody here can just say, God, you answered my prayer. Yes, Do I have a witness here today? I'm glad today that the Lord answered my prayer. I can stand here this morning and say the Lord has made a way out of nowhere. Do I have a witness here? Ain't God all right? I say, ain't he all right? Do I have a witness here today? Thank you, Hezekiah. For telling me what the Lord will do. He woke me up this morning and started me on another day journey. I'm glad today that everything is going to be all right. Yeah, I say, yeah. Ain't he good? Ain't he good? Has he been good to you? If he's been good to you, turn to your Turn to somebody, I know you got your mask on. Turn to the neighbor, the neighbor, the neighbor, the neighbor. The Lord has, the Lord has, the Lord has. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ain't he good? Ain't he good? Make your way out of no way. Sanctified. We call one dog five. 
why she should buy that. One of the prophets of old said, you need to do this What God do you want But he said, that for me. In my heart, I can tell you what to do in your heart. But as for me and the Coleman family, and I've learned, I've learned, God has blessed me and He has blessed you. Haven't He blessed you? I don't know about you, but He has truly blessed me. And not only me, but He has blessed my family in a mighty way. Those of my father's house open. Is there any one today? Because I think that will come. Would you come? Thank <laughs> you. 
We thank you, God, for covering us with your blood. Yes. Bless us now. Clean us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
remembrance of his broken body, you may now eat the bread. In the remembrance of his blood that he shed for the remissions of all of our sins, you may now drink and drink ye all of it. And let the church say, Amen. Amen. How many of you are blessed today? Amen. Amen. Remember the thought out of this message today. When your problems come, when your circumstances come, turn your face to the wall. And have a little talk with Jesus. And he will make everything all right. Sometimes we get caught up in our business. Busy, busy, busy. But you need to get along with God. Turn your face to the wall. You don't, you don't need to be on your phone. You don't need to put the, take the phone off the hook in the house. Sometimes you have to just have you and God have a talk. And I declare he'll make everything all right. How many of y'all believe that? He'll make everything all right. Give him a praise. Give him a praise. Come on, give him a praise. Give him a praise. Listen. Birmingham. <laughs> Be careful out there in the streets. Amen? Amen. Please. Be careful out there in those streets. This morning we had our 101st homicide. And guess what? According to 100,000 folks, Chicago is better than we are. You know how many millions of folks in Chicago? But Birmingham, we don't have a little over 100,000 100, people. We got 101 homicides. What, what bothers me now, yesterday, the day before yesterday, coming down Arkansas, Delta, this man had his two children, babies, in the car. One of the babies got shot in the arm. They, this sickness, this, this is, it's, it's, See that you don't care who in the car, you just shoot. Yeah, yes, sir. Be careful with that. Be careful where you go. When night before nightfall, I'm in the house. I don't get out unless I have to. Amen. 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 And nothing, I said it's practically every 4th of July. If you do have a spare wheel, <laughs> John, I'm pretty poor with the John. I'm not even sad about you. But listen, enjoy your Labor Day weekend. Amen. Amen. Pray for all of us. Pray for you. Pray for me. We pray for each other. Because danger can come in anyway. That's right. Amen. Amen. Pray Amen. for each other. I pray for your house. That nobody will break in. Because they'll come in your house now. They don't care. They'll kill you out in the street don't even know you. Amen. Amen. We pray for each other. Amen. 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 May God bless you. May God give. keep you under his backs. God has smiled on me.
Bob and give them a big round of applause. Children's Church. We have 21 children today. Amen. Amen. Thank God for Gregory Baker and Justin for uh, playing the music. Amen. 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 Glad they played today. Amen. Yes, they did. I cry. I cry. May the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest in the body and forth and forevermore. Let us all say, Amen.